Jesus is alive. Amen. Amen. Jesus is alive. My brothers and sisters, if this is true, it should change the entire way that we live our life. If Jesus is alive, then we have nothing to be afraid of. It is this proclamation that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead that the early church spoke with great confidence. In fact, the church throughout all of history proclaims this truth in the midst of great resistance and persecution. Listen to how our first pope preaches this gospel. In today's first reading, Peter, he's speaking about Jesus and he says, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And he says, we are witnesses of all that he did. They saw him raise people from the dead. They saw him heal people. They saw him deliver people from Satan's power, from evil spirits. And then he says this, they put him to death. But God raised him. It's so powerful because as Christians, we recognize that Jesus was not just simply doing good in his life back then. He's still doing good today. He's still healing people. He's still delivering people from evil. He's still raising from the dead. What's powerful is that there was a conference uh, earlier last year in Mexico City. There was an eight-year-old girl at this conference where they're preaching about God. God's power to heal. There's an eight-year-old girl who was born without a thyroid, a very rare condition, and it caused serious issues in her life. And as they were worshiping and singing praise to God, she had this vision that God was just starting to do something in her throat. And there was a manifestation of God's presence, and her thyroid began to grow, one that wasn't there. She confirmed this by doctors. She was not born with a thyroid, and all of a sudden now she has a thyroid. And I told that story at a conference in Texas. And I said, this is what God did. And there was a woman there who had so much faith, who previously had her thyroid removed. She began to experience something in her throat. And doctors confirmed that now she has a thyroid. Just over here at a healing service is a woman who was born deaf, able to hear in the name of Jesus. That does not happen in the name, in the name of a dead person. That happens in the name of Jesus Christ, who is alive. And not that the point is that somehow God is going to heal all of us of our sickness in this world, or that somehow he's going to deliver us from all of the evil that we suffer in this world, but that these are signs that he is alive, that he's inviting us into a life where he heals us fully in heaven, where there'll be no more death, no more pain, no more sorrow. This is who God says he is. St. Peter continues, he says, This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible. We ate and drank with him. Like, they didn't eat and drink with a collective hallucination. They didn't eat and drink with a ghost. They saw him, they experienced him, they knew him. And therefore, they proclaimed the gospel with all the more courage and boldness. And this, is what he, this is what he says. He commissioned us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. And everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The proclamation is that Jesus Christ is alive and at the end of our lives, we will be judged. But in his name, we have the forgiveness of our sins. He washes us away. For he washes all of our guilt and our shame away. This really is the proclamation of the church throughout centuries that gives us hope. And the question is, is does this proclamation, proclamation make any difference in our life? Does it make any difference of how we live our life? Think about it this way. If Jesus Christ is alive, that means the purpose of life is not really to get all that we can from this world. That's certainly what our world around us believes. Right? Certainly, though, let's get as much pleasure, as much comfort, much success, as much honor, as, as much status as we can in this world. But the reality is, that's not the goal of life. The, if Jesus is alive, the goal of life is to come to know him, to be one with him, and to give ourselves away in love as he loved us. That the person with the most love wins. The person with the most faith wins. It's not about getting ahead in this world. And the question is, does that actually impact the way that we live our life? You see, life is short, death is certain, and eternity is long. 
Jesus is inviting us into his resurrection life so that we can manifest his goodness here so that we who live in this dark world, a world that is filled with suffering. Some of you are experiencing suffering right now. Maybe you've lost someone in your life. Maybe there's a death that you're experiencing somewhere and you need life. Whatever it is, God is calling us to manifest his goodness here on earth so that when we die, we can be with him forever. One of the things that I, I love to do, and it's not just because I'm a very morbid person, I love to celebrate funerals. Some of you are like, okay, Father, that's really weird, but I think it's one of the, the best things that I do as a priest. Why? Because it's where the rubber of the gospel hits the road of our life. It's where we, in the midst of our suffering, hear once more of the promise of the risen one. If you believe in me and you, you repent of your sins, you will have eternal life. He speaks to us in the midst of our brokenness. This is not the end. You have nothing to be afraid of. I will take care of them. I will take care of you. And that gospel transforms us. And sometimes when I'm celebrating funerals, I often do so when, when families who aren't really practicing their faith come to the church. And I meet with the families, and, and these are people who maybe were baptized Christian, but Jesus makes no difference in their life. The worldview of the Christian life is not even in their life. And so sometimes I want to ask them this question, like, do you believe that you, when you die, you will go to heaven? But there's even a more fundamental question. Do you want to go to heaven? When you die, do you want to go to heaven? And most people, if I were to ask them, even people who never go to church, like, well, yeah, of course. But the reality is, is that if heaven makes no difference for us now, that is, if the resurrection of Jesus makes no difference in our own life, what makes us think that we're somehow, it's somehow going to make a difference when we die? To put it another way, if heaven is real, then it's an exchange of love between the God who loves us and we who respond to his love. And he's inviting us to respond to that love. In the New Testament, that is faith and repentance. And so if we're not living in faith and repentance now, then really in a certain sense, we're saying, no thank you, God. No thank you to this invitation to life. Because if we don't have it now, we might not have it when we die. You see, Jesus Christ is living. He's alive and he wants us to have a relationship with him because he wants to be with us. That's why he sent his son. This is why Jesus suffered and died so that we might have life. And so my brothers and sisters today, uh, as we celebrate this great feast that Jesus Christ is alive, we really have nothing to be afraid of. The God who enters into our history changes us if we allow him. Let's recommit our faith today to the risen one. Because when we die, what will be more important than anything else is not how successful we were, not whether or not we didn't suffer or whether or not we were healthy, not how, much, how many friends we had. What's going to matter more than anything else is whether or not we had a real relationship with the only one who has power over death, Jesus Christ. Let's give God our praise and glory today for giving us hope as we commit our lives to him so that when we die, we too might be risen from the dead.